Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, I'm getting translation rules. Unfortunately, I, uh, can't, I can't address you in Italian. I, uh, I speak only two languages, uh, English and genomics. <laughs> uh, but it's certainly uh, a wonderful pleasure for both myself and my fiancée, uh, Heather Kowalski, to, to be here in the city of Florence uh, today and uh, to join you at the foundation uh, where you uh, I certainly want to applaud your support of basic science research uh, here in Florence. Uh, in, the, in the modern society we have to look to multiple sources uh, uh, for fund science to move forward. We can't rely just on governments and uh, what you're doing is a, a very major contribution. I'm certainly very honored to be receiving this award. Uh, I certainly thank the scientific committee uh, for that recognition. Uh, I know many of the previous recipients, and it's a wonderful group uh, of individuals uh, to, uh, to join as colleagues. So this evening I'll be talking about uh, my institute and my company's work on everything from decoding the human genome uh, we published the first uh, complete human genome last September, uh, helping us to understand that human variation is much greater than we knew before, uh, as much as 1 to 3 percent uh, instead of 0.1 uh, percent. I'll also be talking about our work on characterizing the environment using the tools that we developed for sequencing the human genome. Uh, and from those just in the last year, we more than doubled the number of all genes known to science. Uh, a feat that we intend to meet again this year with doubling the number again. Uh, so we're uh, in a very rapid uh, growth of knowledge uh, based on genomics. Uh, and the implications uh, we think are tremendous for the planet. Third, I'll be speaking about what I consider the uh, largest challenge ever for humanity. Uh, just in my lifetime, uh, the population of this planet has tripled. Uh, within 40 years, uh, there could be as many as 9 billion people. That means there will be four people for everybody that was on this planet the year I was born in 1946. And the challenge to provide food, clean water, energy, and shelter for those 9 billion people uh, without destroying our planet is an overwhelming challenge for humanity. I'll be talking about our latest research on trying to understand the fundamental basics of life, from trying to recreate uh, life, uh, from starting with information in the computer. We built the largest uh, man-made molecule, uh, the largest chemically made uh, molecule. It's a chromosome of a bacteria. Uh, we hope to be able to show how we can actually boot up a new life uh, from these chemically made pieces of DNA and the implications for understanding the environment, the implications for new energy sources, the implications uh, hopefully for uh, more new vaccines as we've done in the past uh, with Dr. Rapali. Uh, so genomics can provide preventative medicine, hopefully new treatments, and even more importantly, hopefully a way to at least slow down the damage we're doing to our environment, if not reverse it. And after a day and a half of wandering around this beautiful city and rain and even snow, <laughs> I, I think the Chamber of Congress for producing sunshine today. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I would like to know, uh, one is uh, just a curiosity, uh, to know how long it takes to uh, realize the uh, genomic, uh, mm, let's say, mm, of, the, of each human being in, in the sense of thinking in the future to have the opportunity of having such an identity card for each one. Just not so long ago, uh, it was thought that it was going to take 15 or 20 years and billions of dollars and involve most major governments and researchers. We changed that equation uh, to nine months and $100 million in 2000. Uh, now it's been changed to uh, maybe uh, roughly $1.5 million in several months. But I'm part of the XPRIZE Foundation. We have a $10 million prize whatever scientists come up with the faster mechanism for sequencing. Uh, 
so that we can all get our genome sequenced very quickly for maybe less than $1,000. So that's, that's the first major step, and I think we will be able to give out uh, that check of $10 million sometime in the next five years. Uh, right now, there's only uh, one human genome that's been published, and that's, uh, that's my genome. I, I wrote a book about it uh, uh, in terms of how difficult it is to interpret that information. So we need tens to hundreds of thousands of genomes to be able to truly begin to understand what the human genome sequence can tell us. Lei si occupa del studio del cosiddetto minimum life. Qual è secondo lei il numero minimo di componenti in termini di proteine o di geni necessari per far scattare la vita, diciamo? So we've been trying to answer the question for about 15 years on minimal life. What is a minimal genome? that can lead to self-replicating life. Uh, and it turns out the definitions are very important because we found we cannot define life just on the genetic code. There's two components, it's genetic code and the environment. And you have to define both to define life, whether it's minimal or not. Uh, but we think uh, we can have a self-replicating cell with maybe around 400 genes in a very rich environment. Humans have uh, roughly 23,000 genes in 100 trillion different cells. 